This is an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar illustrating lighting techniques in Apple Motion 5.5. Hi, my name is Larry Jordan. In this short video tutorial, I'll illustrate how to create a cast shadow from a chroma key using lights in Apple Motion. This is the same image that we worked with last week where we duplicated a chroma key, added the threshold feature, and created a cast shadow. The good news is it works. The bad news is if your set has angles to it, the cast shadow does not change based upon the angle of the background. And that's exactly what I've done here. I've created a background where I have a floor going back and a wall behind it. So I want to apply his drop shadow there. Well, let's just take a look at this. What we learned last week is to select our video clip, go to filters, go to keying, and we'll apply a key here. The default settings are not bad. I'll click on key, go to the inspector, and this time go to Matte Tools and just shrink this a couple to just clean up the edges. That's all I'm going to do with the key. And we're done. Okay, so that's the key here. I'm going to add a light and we'll call it Ambience. And notice that as soon as I add a light, the default ambience is turned off. And now I'm working only with the lights that I add. I'll pull this ambience down. By default, whenever you add a light, it's always a point light, a bare bulb hanging in the center of the room. I want to add ambience. And that ambience is going to be a dark red. And we'll pull it way down because I want to have it be really dark, just enough to have presence. Uh, it's about right. Make it five just to make it easy. Well, that's kind of cool in its own way. Already it's better because remember, I can't color the ambient light in the default setting, but I can if I add an ambient light. Let's select the light folder, go up to Object Light. This time I'll use the keyboard shortcut Shift Command L. It adds a point light that I'll add into the folder, not because I have to, but simply because it helps me to get organized. And I've got this interesting silhouette where he's lit with the ambient light and the background is lit mostly with the point light. Well, if I take the point light and move it, Although I can move a point light using these arrows, I find it really difficult because unlike a physical light that you can grab and drag and turn all at the same time with your hands, here you can change one angle at a time or move in one direction, up or down, left or right, closer or farther away. And I find these arrows difficult. So instead, I prefer to watch the light in the viewer, but move it by going to the inspector properties. And here, notice as I play with the light, it's moving closer to the back wall till it goes behind it. Or now it's coming toward the talent. It goes through the talent and now the talent is lit, but I've lost the red ambience. Hmm, not what I wanted. But notice how I can move the light. And notice there's no ability to rotate because point lights can't rotate. They're sending light in all directions all the time. Let's just go back to light. I could add a directional light. And now as I rotate the direction, the problem is there's no depth to him. Uh, so the directional light doesn't help me a whole lot. I could use the directional light instead of the ambient light. Let's go with a spotlight. A spotlight, now that starts to give me something to work with. Let's go back and click on properties and reset the parameter. And notice that our rotation, we've got it rotated slightly. Let's reset that parameter and now I have something I can work with. Let's take our Z space and pull the light back so it lights him. Oh, that's kind of cool. Right about there. Let's go back to the light twirl down the spot options. Remember I said we can make the spot tighter or make the spot wider? Let's make it a little bit tighter. And the soft edge, rather than have it be a sharp edge like you see here, let's make it softer, right around 15 or so, and make it a bit smaller. And notice also I've got the background and I've got the foreground. That's called fall off. Fall off is how dim does it get the farther the light gets from the lamp. 
here the light is equally bright at any arbitrary distance. Well, that's not real life. Real life is it's brighter when you're close to the light and it's not so bright when you're farther from the light. So let's now open this spot up. Let's wait, wait, time out. That was around 20. Now let's open this up a bit to have it more on his face by changing properties and pull it back. So we light more of him, pull it to the side and rotate it. So the lighting looks like it picks up. He's lit brighter in real life on the camera left side. So let's pull the spotlight in from that to reinforce that same feeling. And now I'll go back to here and we'll just tweak the fall off just a bit more and we'll boost the intensity. 100% just means where it starts. Let's make it a little bit brighter. You can go up to 400% really make the intensity pop. Isn't that neat? But there's no shadows. That's because we didn't check the shadow box down here. Check the shadow box. Oh, let's raise that light up a bit. And let's pull it back in Z space so the shadow is much less big. Back, 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 back. And over a bit. And up a bit. There we go. Now the shadow's too sharp. Go back to light, twirl down shadows, soften the shadow a lot, like around 60. Kind of cool. Let's just play this. Oh, we need to make the cone smaller. And tilt the light down. There we go. That's what I want to see. And I'll play it. And notice the angle of the shadow on the back wall is different than the angle of the shadow on the floor because the geometry of where he is and the wall and the floor are all different. Which means this is a much more realistic cast shadow than simply duplicating what we did uh, last week in terms of copying the video and dropping it behind him. Is that not cool? Watch again. And of course, the background is animated because I can. The floor is animated because I can. The light can be animated. We'll do that a little bit later this morning. We can adjust the shadow and the softness, the brightness on his face, the angle of the light. Ah, yeah. <laughs> Don't start lighting when you're about 10 minutes away from the deadline. You will never, ever get the project done. It's not that it's hard. It's just too much cool stuff to play with. This was an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar illustrating lighting techniques in Apple Motion. For the complete version of this online training, please visit our store at larryjordan.com store and look for Webinar 306. By the way, when you need to stretch your training dollars, membership in our video training library saves you money and time. You can access all our videos for a low monthly price of only $19.99. That's almost 2,000 movies, hundreds of hours on a wide variety of subjects. Plus, premium members can download practice media and projects. Our training covers Apple and Adobe software. We update it multiple times each month. And for more information, visit LarryJordan.com slash membership. And thanks.